Griffin's had a run against Washington. You're, you're running against a guy who has been trying to run against Washington. Do you, do you think Griffin's a pinhead? No, because I wasn't referring to anybody in particular because any one of you or anybody else, it's easy to run against anything because um, I don't try to characterize this campaign. I mean, I don't think that's my business to do that, but I just think it's a waste of our time to continue to do that. So that's why I'm just speaking for myself, not for him. Um, I don't characterize this campaign that way at all. What, when you're referring to, to low, you kept on bringing up the term wa wages and low cost and wages. Are you making reference to the comments you made last week? Or? Okay. Oh, yeah. That, of course, is that's more deeply is a reference to my very core and what I believe. But there is no question the comments that he made last week I disagree with. There's no doubt about that. Okay. But it's what I believe, you know, from my very being that people ought to be treated with dignity that they ought to have a good way. You said you're not running against Washington. Uh -huh. He's also thrown out some other proposals. He says he's only going to serve two six-year terms. He's not going to accept uh, congressional pension, uh -huh. uh, things like that. What, what are your stances on those positions? I think whether or not a person continues, continues to serve is up to the people, or if you voluntarily decide you're not going to run again. I mean, the people are the ones who determine the term limits in this case, and I think that's as it should be. And when it comes to a pension, I absolutely am not going to say I would not take my pension. My goodness, I, I have spent my life in public service. When you've done that, as a school teacher, you know I cannot afford to give up my pension. I'm glad for him if he's in a position that's great. But I'm in no position to say I, I would not accept a pension. And what was the third question? You mean a, a congressional pension? Congressional pension. Yeah. Like you're, you're saying you don't think there should be any restrictions except for just what what your own judgment is. I, I think the restriction absolutely is your judgment. And people ought to expect good judgment from, from us. Because earmarks have gotten a bad name because people have exercised poor judgment. And so what we do oftentimes is rather than dig deeply and understand that there is value, especially for a state like us and a district our size, if we don't compete any time, we can't get if we can't get in get the uh, funding for authorization, because that's one way you get it. You get funding for authorization or grants or earmarks. misguided earmark or a bad, or a bad earmark. Then. You cited a lot yeah, of examples right. of good earmarks. What are some bad ones? For example, if, if Andrew DeMello had a private company and wanted me to uh, put in an earmark so you could buy a brand new plane, mm -hmm. that would be a bad earmark. That would be a, and, and, and those kind of things, as, as I understand, has happened. Even in the public domain. You know, we've talked about the infamous bridge to nowhere. I mean, that's just bad judgment. So for private entities, and expect them to use public money as an earmark for them, I think that's where we get into the bad judgment. The bad judgment. So, um, you know, I just pledge to use good sense about it, use common sense, and do things that will, that will support the people. You said that saying government is broken is like saying the rain is wet. So you do believe government is broken? Yeah, I do. How is it broken? Because I think it's no longer working in the sense that we go to Washington, and people fight for three or four days a week and then they come home and they go back and they fight some more. Democrats and Republicans are not working together. You know, it takes forever to, to get a budget done. You know, we, we have so many nominees for any, you can name an agency, that they have not been, they, they have not uh, been ratified. And, and we have so many things in this country we need to do, like come up with, a, with a, a, a renewable energy policy. But we can't get it done because we won't sit down and quiet and listen to one another and get it done. And people don't want us to go to Washington just to fight. So if, I, if all I'm going to do is go there looking for another fight, I'm not adding anything to, to what's happening there. So, you know, as a school teacher, I had to figure out ways to make things work when people had diverse views. I had to figure out how to do it. All of you had a different attitude about how class should be and what it should be like. I had to figure out ways to make those things work with parents and with the teachers in the school. Uh, if we just all thought and wanted to have our way, then that system would be broken as well. So I think it is. 
You spoke a bit about defending politics, uh, something that can be used for good. Can you uh, speak a little bit about how that might play this year with some of the cynicism that's in the, the country's mindset? Yeah, because I think it starts with this idea of, you know, just saying Washington is broken and then railing away against Washington. So I think we can look at all the things that need to be done in our country. For example, we need to address the issues that our, that our seniors are facing. I talked to uh, a couple in Denard, Arkansas, where they talked about, you know, the things we, we need uh, our, our Medicare to, to be rethought and think about how to help us get things like eyeglasses and, and dental care and hearing aids, things that are not covered according to them. You know, and so that's using politics for good if I, if I try to address something like that. I talked to another um, a, a couple who was from Shirley, and they had a small business there, a candle shop, and they ended up going out of business and losing, I think, something like $700,000 of payrolls in that little town because they could not hold on to their business because of, according to them, international competition. And I don't know if it, they could have been saved, but to look at something like that and see what's happening to small business owners, to me, that would be using politics for good because it's saving something and it's helping people have jobs. And if we use politics to help undergird our public education system, so we can have those high common core standards, that's using politics.